And uh, so welcome everybody to Energy Play Shop number 35. Today is February the uh, 16th, 2023. So we were already discussing some um, information. Uh, part of the thing is you there are some foundation things that you do in, when you're working with energy is that you make sure that um, central meridian is, is strong and aligned. Also, your chakras are strong and aligned. So those two are foundation. Before you try to do any energy work on yourself or healing yourself or e healing others, I, I strongly advise healing someone else um, unless you have healed yourself enough. Because if you haven't healed, healed yourself, then you're actually passing corrupted energies to other people anyways. So your sense of when you try to heal someone and your own energy is so um, all over the map, you're not helping that person. You're actually harming them more than you help them. I don't know why people who, you know, can't, can't even... Um, like function properly themselves uh, uh, like the, you know, when you mentioned that lady's hands is shaking why is she still trying to help someone else when she can't even help herself so first thing first is you heal yourself first because if you are not in a good state and you try to send energy to help someone else you're sending all of your crazy energy to them you're actually making it worse for them so don't do that. You are not doing anyone any good when you do that. Help yourself first. Heal yourself so that you yourself are strong. When you're strong, the energy that you send out would, would be much better for someone else. So, yes, um, foundation work is central meridian, strong. And you, all the, the, the um, energy centers are aligned. And the um, and your 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 chakras are strong and aligned as well. So those two are foundation. If you can't even do those two, if you don't feel your own energy strong, then don't try to do anything else. Don't even because I'm talking about um, dimensional travel. So if you can't even do those, if you don't even feel that you are balanced, then don't go to any other dimensions because your job the why you're here on earth on the with a body is really to master the 3d plane first when you are balanced in 3d then you can go and explore the other dimensions but if you're not even grounded in 3d then um you're gonna get into trouble when you go into higher dimensions because there will be energies in higher dimensions that um, may latch onto you and you may bring them back and they may they may not be good uh, all good for you so make sure you are grounded first very important and part of grounding yourself is really to make sure that your own energy is running properly first so um, central meridian meditations, like aligning central meridians and your own um, chakras, foundation work. Don't do anything else until you have those two. So um, <laughs> now after that tangent, I just want to um, get back to what I'm going to talk about today. So today is dimensional travel. So um, we'll be doing a we'll be doing a um, presence meditation very shortly. And then after that, we'll start to talk about um, how to do what what are some of the conditions that we need to meet before we uh, actually go and, and travel to other dimensions and also a little bit more about what dimensions actually are and also 
um, we talked about, okay, eight inches is 3D, 16 inches is 4D. So what, um, what, are, what about, you know, 13 inches? What are those? So it's, um, it's all the, the different, um, they are all different planes of energy. It's just that eight inches is a gateway and 16 inches is another gateway. So we'll explain all of that later on. So um, anything that you want to ask before we go into um, presence meditation? You said we are going to go to higher dimensions and if our energy is not uh, kind of strong or stable, it shouldn't be done. So how do you know that we are all now fit to do it? <laughs> For example, I, mean, I feel a little tired, so I'm not I sure. I <laughs> don't do it on your own. When I am doing it with you, then I already set the stage for you. So I set Thank the you. for you. Thank you. Okay, but when you're doing it on your own, make sure you um, go through, because I will talk to you about you know, what kind of... Um, what kind of precautions, protection that you need to do in order to set yourself right. So I will go through that. However, when you, when you, uh, when we're doing it in session now, it's just like when I, when we go to Sifu James, I never have to worry about, you know, hey, can, if, when I go there, am I protected? No, Sifu James does it. That is, that is really part of a, a job of, um, <laughs> of the teacher <laughs> so that's, thank you that's... for the answer can i ask you one question sure before we start Go ahead. so i told that when like when this girl hands were shaking or some other people do like uh moving i told that these people have like they call semantic experience uh, and it's good because they're sensitive and I don't have it so I'm not that sensitive. Somatic experience. Somatic experience, yes. And I, I don't have it so I thought that I'm not really sensitive. So does it mean that when people doing shaking it means that uh, she's not grounded. Um, when all of a sudden you have so much energy going through the body, some bodies are just not used to it. So that's when they have all these shaking. But when your body is is um, when your body is stable and balanced, you shouldn't be shaking. Like if if Sifu James shaking in front of you, what would you think? Do you think he's you know high vibration or not? When you are stable, you work with your body, you transform your body to the extent that your own neurology can actually handle that big flux of energy, you will be stable. But when you're not, then yeah, you may have spasms. When you're stable, you shouldn't. I got it. Thank you. Okay. So we actually have to grounding and be yeah, stable. It's not about you know, shaking around. Yeah, that yeah. I am. That means I am. You know, that means good. Seriously, no. So that means that I'm good because I told, oh, I don't have somatic somatic experience. Oh. <laughs> When I'm meditating, if I'm in the real deep meditation, my body, body vibrates. And that's that's my sign that I know that I am in there fully. Yeah, because it vibrates. Some, yeah, it vibrates. The energy vibrates. Um, but uh, like this time, I'm saying what I did today, I felt it safe because Cornelius already had the meditation. And uh, we shouldn't feel anything. Uh, but what uh, Cornelius didn't say anything bad about Takako, this lady shaking. 
because he thought that she is still doing the healing. She is still sending the healing to her. Because that lady also had a very serious issue. So, I don't know. <laughs> Whether it was... Did you ask Takako how she felt after? Did she get tired or did it stop? Um, can we get back to yeah, yeah, okay. this? Sorry. Yeah, okay. we can talk about that. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. So let's, let's do yeah. the presence meditation now. Okay. So let's just take a deep breath in. And then let it all go. And as you breathe out, also relax your body. And then take another deep breath in. Breathe in slowly and deeply. And allow your lungs to fully inflate. And then let it all go slowly as well. A controlled release of your breath. And then breathe in one more time, slowly and deeply. And as you breathe out, also breathe out slowly. And as you breathe out, relax your body as much as possible. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And allow yourself to just breathe in and out a few more times just so that you can come into rest and calm state. As you feel more relaxed, then set the intention that each time you breathe in, you're also calling back all of your attention and energy. During the day, you have sent your energies out and your attention out to the world and the environment. In this moment, though, call back all of your attention and energy to yourself, consciously and intentionally bring back all of your attention and energy to yourself. Be absolutely selfish in this moment. Let go of thinking about the world outside or anything outside. Simply look inward. Be with yourself and only yourself in this moment. Be absolutely present to everything that's happening inside your body. Notice your own heartbeat. Notice all sensations inside your body. And in this moment, also call on your soul. Call on your spirit guides.
call on the highest frequency version of yourself that you have access to in this moment. Call them all to you. They are always connected to you in this moment. Be conscious of your connection with them. And really feel that connection. And feel yourself solidly occupying and embodying and being embodied in your physical body. When you feel that you're solidly present in your own body, then you come all the way back into the room and open your eyes if you haven't done so already. So welcome back, everybody. I was yawning. Good. We are releasing some things. Okay, so let me just check to see what's going on. I just want to access the... Uh... Oops. Yes, there we go. Okay, so this is the... Okay, so we're talking about dimensional travels today. And so before we start to you know, travel around, let's actually just um, talk a little bit or do doing some um, review first. So as I already mentioned, this is we, I like all is mind. meaning that is actually all energy all is energy and energy goes where your attention sends it to so that's why i mention all is mine because it's energy everything is energy energy is actually simply a a worker and a worker needs direction. And it is your mind that gives energy direction to do things, to make things happen, to move or to um, transform. So yes, all is energy, everything is energy and all is mind as well. So that's why when we are working with energy, um, it's very important to be in a clear mind, be in a clear state of mind. So what are dimensions first? So what dimensions are um, bands of frequencies? So we have Eight inches above our head is the gateway for Earth. So it's really gateway for third dimension. Actually, yeah, I, eight inches above your head. So eight inches above your head. That is a, a gateway. So what do I mean by gateway? Um, so seven inches. There is also a band of energy there. But gateway is actually there's a gap in between, in between uh, seventh and eight inches. So there is, there's, um, at the eight inches above your head, there is a, a layer which you have to go through. Energy has to go through that layer. And once it passed through that, that layer, then it is going into uh, above the, the third dimension. 
So eight inches is a gateway. And um, I'll talk more about what gate, gateways are a little later on. I just want to introduce the idea that there are um, energies, level planes of energies is everywhere. So there are energies at seven inches, nine inches, 12 inches, 13 inches. However, the gateways between one dimension, the dimension is, is um, a collection of planes of energy, which the, the way that they are band together, they, they're called a particular dimension, one particular dimension, is because it's how we interpret reality. So at the third dimension, we interpret reality a certain way. And as we go up on the fourth dimension, we interpret energy a certain way, just to give you an example. For example, um, <clears throat> so I have a body, right? I, I would, um, at 3D, I'm only concerning about this body. So all I know is this body. So how I interact with reality is just with my body. Um, if I want to go look at the sunshine, I actually have to physically take my body outdoors to look at the sunshine. Fourth, at the fourth dimension, where um, there is still time, but there is really no space. At fourth dimension, if I want to go out, if I, if I am familiar with fourth dimension, if I've integrated fourth dimension within my body, I don't really need to go outside to look at the, the, the sunshine. I could actually just project my consciousness outdoors and I would be able to heal sunshine. I would be able to access such on the sunshine and all the information that is contained within the sunshine. And at fifth dimension, I'm so fifth dimension, I have access to all space time. So fifth dimension, I can go back and look at what happened a million years ago. And I can also look forward a million years ago. Like if I'm, when I'm fully integrated into fifth dimension, my consciousness will be able to do that. So that is, a, that is a, one example of what do I mean by the dimensions is that each dimension actually gives you a very different um, way to interact with what we perceive as reality. So any questions about what dimensions are so far? Or is good? Um, one sec. Uh, the, so the dimensions are like all through the universe, is it? Or just for <laughs> uh, Earth? <laughs> okay, so dimensions are all through the universe. So at third dimension, we understand the universe one way. At fourth dimension, we understand the universe at an expanded way. So each dimension gives us more information about how to relate with the, the universe. Is it true that all dead people they uh, have they in four they in fourth dimension con in, they have four dimension consciousness? Huh? What? What was this question again? So the souls of that of dead people who left the body, uh, they have fourth dimension. Is it true? They um. Locate fourth dimension. That's what my question. Okay, so fourth dimension is is a big band. So yes, 
disembodied um so disembodied um people so ghosts as in yes when when someone die yes their part of their um not their soul not not their cosmic soul but their um earth soul goes to the fourth dimension And so that's why um, the fourth dimension um, is accessible by um, so disembodied, so so kind of ghosts is there, and also aliens. So meaning that people that are not from um, Earth, they also um, you can also meet them within the fourth dimension because they are not quite from from Earth. So they relate to the earth dimension through the fourth dimension. So that's, so there are, you know, that's why um, we try not to stay in the fourth dimension too much. We would need to, uh, when we travel the dimensions, there are certain things that you can do. We can do healing within the fourth dimension because within the fourth dimension, we also have access to the light body as well. So um, not saying that fourth dimension is bad, don't go there, no. Um, any dimension there, there's good and bad is that's why setting an intention and really um, being grounded and protected is important when you go and travel the dimensions. Because all this, when you have, um, when you're grounded and you have proper protection, yeah, the, the ghosts may show up, and but they won't be able to attach to you. Okay. Yes. Well, I have something. Uh, so uh, you're <clears throat> saying all all the spirits like will go to the fourth dimension once they die, and. Uh, um, what about the aliens who come to Earth, like who are living amongst us? Are they just floating between fourth and our third dimension? Um, they, okay. they, they can, they can blip in and out of third dimension. So when they yeah. are not in third dimension, then in a different dimension, we won't be able to see them. Unless okay. we have dimensional sight, then we can we can see them. So when I say that all the ghosts they they go to the uh, the fourth dimension, does not mean that they all stay there. No, they go there as a transition, and then they make up their mind: do they want to go back to the um, Earth Collective, or do they want to? stay around as a disembodied spirit so they can also go into the universe right other places other planets ghosts no no okay that's so goal. yes so ah. so you remember there are two parts yeah there is a cosmic and then there's earth so the earth so cannot travel anywhere else it is attached <clears throat> to earth okay. okay any other questions so, so that that's all that, um, so whether the soul goes to an, another dimension this earth soul will always be in this fourth dimension or do they even take part again into another body. Yes, they do go. They they do uh, when they go back to the. So when a an Earth soul departs the body, mm -hmm. it goes to mm -hmm. the fourth dimension. It goes to actually the 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 um, early fourth dimension, or the lower fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. So that they they can make a choice. Do they want to go back to the um, Earth Soul Collective, or do they, if they have unfinished business and they cannot let go, then some of them do choose to hang around. 
And so they, they can make a choice to go back to the Earth Soul Collective, which means that they can be paired up with um, an, another cosmic soul so that they can be incarnated into a body again. Mm. Okay. Wow, it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but it does not matter. You don't need to know all of that no, in order no. to travel the dimensions. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking that there will be so many <laughs> souls there in the, whatever the earth souls, like four billion, <laughs> we all go. Mm -hmm. Like that, there'll be so many <laughs> souls <laughs> to navigate through. Like that's what I'm saying. Uh huh. Yeah. Me, you said when we we travel through dimensions, so that soul do not care about us, right? Which soul are you talking about? Whoever in a fourth dimension, soul goes. They don't care about us. When we are going to travel through fourth dimension. They might. That's why we have to talk about protection. Oh, I see. Thank you. <laughs> they might, because um, what the 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 earth souls that decides to hang around, they cannot let go. They cannot let go is really the emotions. They have attachments. So if you're Emotions, if you have emotions and your emotions matches their emotions, then you attract them. So that's why part of the, the, the protection is first, you have to um, make sure your own energy is strong. And then you do the... Um, and then you flip your your CK6, which is and your EK6, so that when your um, EK, EC6 is on top, then you have no emotions. So you have to really let go of emotions because when you're traveling the dimensions, if you have emotions, then you are vulnerable because when you when you are afraid, you are scared. Being afraid and scared is really, um, it's uh, you open a doorway to be attacked. Because when, if you are in fear, then fearful things will be attracted to you. But when you have no emotions, you're not sending out any signals. You're vulnerable, like. You're not when you have no emotions. You're not vulnerable. It's only when you have emotions and then you are vulnerable, because your your own unhealed emotions is going to just attract things to you that you may not be able to handle in this moment. What is so the earth souls are same as spirits? I'm sorry. sorry. What was that? Sorry. Uh -huh. I was asking, Earth souls is the same as the spirits, like when Lucy can see spirits around us? Like... No. Or, no? No. Um, there are spirits that are from higher realms, like our spirit guides. They are spirits as well. Okay. So when so... she sees that somebody from your family is around you, that these are the Earth souls? Or close to us? No? Not necessarily. So how does she say that your sister or your brother or child or whatever was passed? Okay. okay. Um, too, too complicated for me to go okay. into oh, okay. here. Oh, okay. We okay. actually, within our own energy, we hold all of our relatives. We oh, hold okay. we hold a copy of them. Oh. Yes. So yeah, that that's not going into those details today. I want to focus okay. on okay. dimensional okay. travel. Okay. So we can ask other time. questions. You said EC six. What is it? I will explain later. Okay, got it. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, let's continue to talk. Let's continue. Okay, so um, what are dimensions? Okay, I already talked about what are dimensions. Then the next thing on, uh, on the agenda is make sure that you are grounded. So what do I mean by grounded? Um, grounded is not, it's kind of the precursor of being protected. So you have to be grounded first, meaning that um, you don't have anything, any um, particular emotionally um, things happening in your life. So let's say if you if your your partner died, you know, last year or something like that, um, and you haven't quite processed your emotions, then you're not grounded. So don't don't try to do dimensional traveling when something um, that that is that emotional is happening. Um, make sure that you're grounded, as in you make sure you have a roof over your head, you have food on the table. You don't have any um, major illnesses in your body. You're not feeling, you know, um, yeah, um, like big pain in your body. Like little things, sure, everybody has that, but nothing major that is um, making you feel that life sucks. <laughs> so that's that's basically what it means by being grounded. Is that you? feeling okay in your life does not have to be perfect you have, don't have to have the perfect life or everything is doing really well you don't need that but the the minimum is that you feel like you're okay with your life everything is is doing you're doing fine that's what I mean by grounded because as a eternal soul we come here to enjoy our life. So make sure that you have all the basics covered. So that is what I mean by being grounded. And the next thing is um, setting an intention. I already mentioned that all is mine. So we, everything, energy um, takes direction from our consciousness. So make sure that you set an intention. So for me, I want I want to let everybody know my intention for talking about dimensional travel, travelings and all that is really on um, healing emotional and uh, physical issues. That's my intention for all of you. So I would be kind of tailoring my my um um what it is that I would be included in this through those two things is really healing emotional body and healing your physical body. So that is my intention. And I highly suggest that um, that you stick with those two first. Make sure that you emotionally and physically you're okay. Then you can, once you have, um, make sure, once those two things are okay, then you can start to go and set other intentions. Let's say you want to know the mysteries of the universe. Wonderful. But make sure that your yourself emotionally and physically, you are doing fine first. Okay. So that's my explicit um, intention. And whatever intention you may have, that's up to you when you do your own practice. But while we are here, that's my intention. Okay, now protection. Let's talk about protection then. <clears throat> so let me uh, kind of share screen with all of you to go over the protection. So there are a few ways to do protections, okay? Um, first, make sure that you're, make sure you're grounded. So we have mm, covered that. And then make sure you your body is in rhythm, meaning that you do breathing, the five in, five out breathing, so that your body is um, at a calm and steady rhythm, okay? And make sure that your central meridian, which is CM, central meridian, 
and Yi C is really um, energy centers. So uh, CKs are chakras. So we have um, first chakra, root chakra, and then the and we have root chakra. We have uh, sacral chakra, and then we have um, what is that? I always forget the third one. So so. so um, solar plexus, yes. Solar plexus. So solar plexus, we have heart, we have throat, third eye, and then the crown. So that is the chakra. And then um, energy centers. So we actually have eight energy centers. The first one is four inches below our um, root chakra. And then the second one is kind of, um, okay, around the... the um, midway between belly button. So kind of two, three inches down your, your belly button. And then third, fourth, so energy centers. Remember, um, I don't know how many <clears throat> energy play shop ago, I talked about um, the energy centers. So the, um, we have the seventh, center the seventh energy center is about four inches above and then the eighth um energy center is okay i may be getting a little um confused now let me actually check okay so um let me do a share screen <clears throat> to so you guys can see this as well, um, the difference between energy center and, so this is a, so the, the chakra system, this is the white circles, okay? So sixth chakra is, third eye is kind of in front and then the seventh one is here. Whereas the um, the energy centers are in red, so that's why the first one is about four inches below your root chakra, and then the second one. So the central meridian is really down the center of your body, and so. Um, energy center seventh is four inches above your head, head and then ec8 is actually this one here which is eight inches above your head so that is what i mean by we have two energy meridians we have the chakras and then we have the central meridian so these are things that are like, this is just a review, very quick review, okay? <clears throat> so questions so far? You guys remember, I talked about the central meridian and the, the chakras, right? <clears throat> okay. Sifu slide, too. Yeah, that's from Sifu slide. Just reminding people. <laughs> yep. Okay. So the so let me get back to this one here. So make sure that your central meridians, central meridian meaning all your energy centers from one to eight is strong, meaning you feel the energy going in and you feel that they are aligned in a kind of, they, they are stacked one on top of the other in the middle. So it's like an, um, an energy tube in the middle of your body. When your energy centers are all aligned, you can feel that. And the chakras are kind of closer to your spine. Um, the only 
one that is not close to your spine is really the sixth chakra is kind of closer to your forehead. And then it goes back to the, the crown, which is um, pretty much um, towards the, the back of your head. So make sure that your central meridian and your chakras are strong and aligned. So that's part of protection. So these are things that you need to practice, um, daily practice in order to strengthen your own central meridian and the chakras. And then energies are balanced, meaning that um, left and right. So you would feel about ba that balance when you feel um, so all you have to do is actually, so you want to feel whether your left side and your right side, all you have to do is um, really feel. The left side and the right side is the same feeling the same. If you, and you can also do that just by your hands with your palm facing each other. Make sure that left palm and the right palm kind of uh, have this similar feeling. So they're balanced feeling meaning that you don't have one hand particularly hot or particularly cold. And when one hand, and when you feel that there is any imbalance, you simply allow the energy between the left and the right to balance each other out. So then you allow energy from your right hand, go into your left hand and then bounce back and forth until they balance out. So then that's how you balance your left side and your right side. And um, let's go back to, so <clears throat> the next thing is, now the energy is balanced then you, because when you travel, um, emotions is what is going to get you in trouble. When you feel angry or if you when you feel fear, then you actually when you're in upper, when you're in uh, different dimensions, you're going to attract entities that um, wants to uh, be, uh, that are attracted to, to those emotions. So that's why no emotions. You want to turn off your emotions. So how do you do that? So CK6 is really chakra six. So your sixth chakra, which is your third eye and is close to your forehead. So you activate sixth chakra, you activate the energy center six, which is in the middle, still around your third eye area, but in the middle of your head. You activate those two and you merge those two. And then you make sure that the energy center six is on top. So you, you flip on top, flip, activate. When you're normally, your sixth chakra would be on top when you merge these two. Because normally when you live your life, you like to be able to feel emotions, but not when you are traveling. When you're traveling, when you're doing dimensional travel, you want to make sure that you intentionally have your energy center six on top. So you, you, you issue that command and you really feel yourself having um, no emotions. Okay. And then the last one is really protection. So the protection is um, to go to, so the protection part, you have to know that you are going into your eighth, to the energy center eighth, which is eight inches above you to move energy out. So 
However, you have to make sure that your own energy, the X cent uh, EC8 is actually robust and strong and there is enough energy to protect you. That's why all of the other things of making sure your central meridian and um, making sure that your, your body is in rhythm, the five in, five out breathing, all of those things is actually what you do in order to strengthen your EC8. So when all that is done, then the last thing to do is you just kind of do this. You have your hands in prayer position and then you go up to EC8. So eight inches above. And then you pull the energy and then you just fan it out. When they fan it out, what it does is it actually protects your physical body, but it also protects your um, light body as well. Questions so far? Chakra, six chakra, it's right here. Yep. You said EC6 center also here, or it's higher? It's, it's here it as well. Sense? It's here as well, but it's in the middle of your head. Whereas the sixth chakra is more to the front of your forehead. Oh, okay. Okay. So you want to merge those two. And also make sure that EC6 is on top of the sixth chakra. And that way, then you um, you're disconnected with the emotional part, which is the the sixth chakra. How you make sure? Just imagine the command. Oh, okay. the command. Okay, that's what you do. <laughs> you activate EC six. You activate CK six. You merge EC six and CK six. And then EC6 flip on top, activate. And so those four commands. And then uh, after that, you make sure you do this and you do it three times. Really? That's I was just measuring eight inches above the head with a ruler. And it's not the full extent of our hands. It's actually a little less. Because the full extent would be about 12 inches. Mm -hmm. So is it does it have to be like eight inches literally or just that's an approximation? Um, like when you are there? Yeah, yeah. You, like your palm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the top. It's, the more than, it's more than eight inches. It's it comes to almost 10 and a half, 11. Okay. Um, okay. It's approximate. That's what I'm saying. Really yeah. the intention. Yeah. Because exactly. everybody's hands, their arm length is a little different. Different. Okay. Yeah. Eight so, inches is this much. If you want to be that exact, <laughs> but as I mentioned, the intention is the intent. Yeah. So you intend. So the intention is more important. <clears throat> you can, like, when you fire up your um, EC8, you would be able to feel it because you would feel the energy there. So, yeah, I, I at least I can feel the energy there. Yeah. Let's see, your hand was not fully extended. Yeah. So. Thanks. Okay. That is what we do. <laughs> okay, hang on. Let me see. What should I do? Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to talk a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is actually take you all through the protection, like doing the breathing in and strengthening um, all of that. And then also taking you guys to... Um, Okay, let's see. Let's let's actually go to. I want 
to actually give you all of you a taste. So it, it won't be just me talking all today, then you actually have some um, actual experience of traveling. <clears throat> then, so let's, let's move on then. Um, so the talking about, so all of that protection, so we kind of covered all of the protection part. And then now Nix is talking about travel, dimensional travels. There are actually more than one way to do this dimensional travel. We can actually travel with our consciousness or we travel with our light body. So what do I mean by light body? So let me define the light body first. Um, the light body is really the astral body or like there are different names for it. The, we have astral body, um, the light body. So where is the light body? The light body is about um, four inches. So if you if you put your arms forward and about four inches before the, the, the length of your arm, that's where your light body is. You will feel that there is something there. So when you power up your energy, the third energy center, you see three. When you really align your um, energy center, your central meridian, and it's the EC3, energy center three, that actually powers this energy, this light body. So when your EC3 is strong, you can actually feel that there is something there when you put your arm in front, that there is something there in front that is your light body so it's it's about four inches less than the length of your arm that's approximately where the light body is so um you can travel with uh with consciousness or you can travel with your light body the difference being that when you travel with your consciousness you can feel and you can communicate with the environment that you are traveling to with the light body, though, you can actually see, you can hear, you can feel, and you can communicate. So the light body traveling is actually more powerful. However, um, light body has access to information that your mind right now may not be able to process. So we have to actually um, activate knowing, which is somewhere down the, the line. So that's why for now, we're only talking about traveling with consciousness. Later on, we'll start to build up to, to um, traveling with the light body. So that is, any questions about what the light body is? No, all good? Okay. <laughs> is it like an aura? Yeah. Um, hmm. no, not really an aura. It's not like an aura. The, the, um, the light body is more than your aura. Your aura, you can see your aura within your light body, but your, um, your light body is something specific. Our light body has the shape like our shape, or it's around us. Yeah, it's it's it has our shape. It has our shape. Mm. Okay. So the light body is actually shaped like you. So it, it's it's about uh, your height. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, gateway so okay so let me share screen now so i'm not i'm going to talk about um so the gateways <clears throat> dimensional gateways so four inches above our head that's our antenna so it's still within the third dimension but our antenna is where we um the the ten guardians communicate with us so that's four inches eight inches is 
a gateway for third dimension and then 16 and so all the way up to uh, 10th dimension. And uh, there are, of course, dimensions beyond the 10th. However, um, I'm not really going to talk about those because above the 10th dimension is really the next octave of ex existence. So right now <laughs> in our in in our consciousness right now, if we can go up to 10th dimension, that's already pretty good. <clears throat> so and also um gateway, meaning that you know, so anything below the eight eight inches is also within 3D. It's also within 3D. They have their own planes of energies so let's say 13 is actually um, when when you activate the 13 inch plane of energy is you can actually um flip the light body around because light body is a mirror image but when you activate 13th inch it actually you can flip it around so the different things that you can do in different planes of energy so these ones that we talk about now they are the gateways and um thing to note about gateway is that for eight inches gateway which is the 3d gateway it has to be at least 60 percent open for us to feel okay if you're feeling a little, um, if you're feeling a little out of sorts, it may be because your gateway is less than sixty percent open, and you can feel it because your shoulders would feel um, tight, lopsided, imbalance. So that's when you know, oh, okay, eight inch gateway. So let's actually tr try it out. Let's actually try out what um, having our gateway all shut down looks feels like. <clears throat> all right. So if you if you don't feel it, if you don't try it, then you won't know the difference. So let's let's all just um, take in a few breaths. Just breathe in. And breathe out. And just do a few breaths of just slowly breathing in and slowly breathing out. So we can just calm our body down. Okay, so now just connect with your heart. Make sure you are feeling okay. It's within your heart. Just imagine that you're breathing in pure love from the creator source. And as you breathe out, let go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. And really notice how your shoulders are in this moment. And now let's Let's do this. Eight inches, a hundred percent open. Activate.
eight inches, a hundred percent open, activate. Really feel how it feels to have your eight inches gateway, a hundred percent open. Feel what that feels like. Okay, eight inches, shut down, activate. Eight inches, shut down, activate. Feel what that feels like. Okay, eight inches, 60% open, activate. Eight inches, 60% open, activate. Feel, feel what it feels like to have your eight inch gateway 60% open. Eight inches, 100% open, activate. Eight inches, 100% open, activate. Okay, come back to the room. How do you feel? How does each of those different commands have you feeling? Did you notice any changes? I did when it was shut down. I feel like my energy going like, like this inside. Mm -hmm. And then the open 60, I did like this. And hundred, and I feel like I'm open. Okay, cool. Thank you for sharing. I hope you all feel some difference between open and shut down, because that's really how you know it, how you notice. So, in order for you to go from um third dimension to the fourth dimension to the fifth dimension so let's say you want to go to the sixth dimension it means so when you go want to go to the sixth dimension make sure that you go that the fifth dimension fourth dimension and the third dimension gateway are all fully open because if you're not fully open then um you you can't get there. So that's why when you are doing this at first is to go from third dimension, like open the eight inches, 100%. <laughs> nice release. <laughs> and then you go to fourth dimension, which is 16 inches, then 32 inches, fifth dimension. And then you go to sixth dimension. So don't skip. Don't just say, okay, I opened my third 3D. Now let me just go to 6D. Um, when you are proficient in traveling dimensions, sure, skip. But when you're learning, um, I would highly suggest that you do it step by step. Go through each of those dimensions so that you are really aware that each of the lower dimensions are fully open. So that will 
it really be <clears throat> um that will make sure that you can get there without too much um trouble okay so then the other thing that I want to talk about, just the one last thing before we go to do our first travel is how do you know you are there? Okay. How do you know you're there? So every time we we go, let's say we issue a, um, a command that we want eight inches activate. When you issue a command like that, you send out um, your intention. So you feel energies leaving your body through the top of your head. And so that's when you send out that intention. And then you it, it will stop because you send the intention out so you can feel energy going out. And then you feel that there is a bunch of energies coming down. That's when you know that um, you send out in a, a command and that's your reply. So when the bunch of energies come down, then you notice that. And so you feel in between your palms, you feel the energies from your left and your right palm start to synchronize. When those two, when the both palms synchronize, then you know that, okay, yeah, I'm there. I'm at eight inches. And then you can go to 40, so 16 inches. And you, 16 inch activate. Then you, at first you would feel, as you issue the command, energies will leave your body. And then you feel a bunch of energies coming down. And this time, because you're going to a higher dimension, you can actually feel the energies coming down being of a faster, a higher frequency. You can feel that. And you feel that within your, between your, your palms. Then when the left and the right palm um, become synchronized, then you know, yep, I'm there. I'm in 4, 4D now. So that's, how you know is when you issue the command, you feel the energy go up and then the uh, the reply. And that's when when the the gateway is open, then you feel the energy from that gateway coming back to you. And then you let it become synchronized within your body, left and right. So so when you feel your left and right palm, you feel both sides being synchronized then you know synchronized is the pulse between the left and the right palm okay so same thing when you go to fourth dimension the only difference is you feel the energy being faster so it's a higher frequency and then when you go to 5d which is 32 inches it will be even faster the frequency so that is how we go and travel Questions before you actually go and do it? It's it's so interesting, so wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I appreciate that you appreciate. <clears throat> thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to...